Hello, welcome to today's Bite Size PD on flipping the script, tools to replace flip. Our learning intentions and success criteria today, you are learning tools that students can use to record video responses so that you can design instruction with scaffolded, scaffolded opportunities to respond. You'll know you've learned it when you are able to select an appropriate video recording tool that supports the intended learning intention. Everything that we do in Canyon's school district is aligned to our MTSS framework. These are the system-wide practices that help us to ensure that every learner in Canyon School District succeeds. Today, we are going to focus on high quality teaching and learning as our critical component. Specifically, we'll look at how we can use video responses from students to support either structured classroom discussions or opportunities to respond. With our opportunities to respond, we are most likely using a wiser strategy. Wiser strategies scaffold the complexity of the content and tasks for the learners through writing, inquiry, speaking and listening, and or reading and viewing. Speaking and listening are likely a part of our video responses, and they are essential for learners to build that understanding, to be able to exchange ideas, information, and opinions through collaboration and engagement. If you are in an AVID school, Wicker is utilized instead of Wiser. As we get started today, I want to take a second just to acknowledge uh, why we're here, and that is the retirement of FLIP. Uh, forever in our URLs, FLIP helps students to, sh to share their voices and collaborate in ways we'll never forget. Though it has transitioned to view-only mode, it's paved the way for new and exciting tools to continue its legacy. I, too, was a major fan of Flip, and I'm super sad to see it go away. But I do think that it's going to push some other tools to bring some of those features that Flip had into their software. Because Flip was a very popular tour tool among teachers and students, I think that other tools are going to work to em emulate that tool and fill that need. If you are a past user of Flip, you have until September 30th to download any of your past videos, and they will not be available to download after that point. So what is the best alternative? What should you use if you we're previously using Flip and you still want to do some video submissions with your students. My answer really depends on how you are using Flip because there are several different lessons and ways that you can design assignments in Flip. So I'm going to go through kind of my top three options for an alternative to Flip and talk about the pros and cons of some of these options. With our first one, it's Padlet. I really love Padlet. It's great for easily recording video, um, but the videos are limited to only two minutes. So if you are having students have a discussion, you want them to respond to each other, Padlet is a great option as long as you are okay with the video submissions being two minutes or less. The other limitation is that with the free version of Padlet, which is the version of Padlet that I use often. Only three discussion boards are allowed at a time. So you may have, to, if you use video submissions a lot or discussion boards a lot, you may have to kind of reuse those boards as soon as you're finished with the assignment to get around having three at a time. You can reuse different boards, kind of clear the content, and then create... Um, edit it so that you have a new board every time. The second option is Canvas. A lot of times you, you might not think about using Canvas for video discussions, but there is an embedded media recorder right in Canvas, so it works well for discussions or assignments. The main advantage to this tool is that it has quick setup. Grading is really easy because you can do it in SpeedGrader, and then grades that we have in our Canvas gradebook easily pass to Skyward. So that makes things very simple. 
It also allows for you to have those nice threaded discussions so students can respond back to each other uh, if they if you want to have a discussion, a written discussion or video discussion around their post. The only limitation is these can support longer videos than two minutes. However, if you get too long with your media recordings, they will take more time to render. And if you do not have a stable internet connection, it can sometimes interrupt that rendering and cause problems. Generally, that'll happen if the recording is over 15 minutes. So if you're anywhere but less than 15 minutes, you should be okay. But you might have to tell students to be a little patient as they're waiting for that rendering to take place so that they can post their video. My last option for today is Canva. Canva works great for those longer videos. If you are having students post uh, longer videos that are, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes long. There is not a known limit for how long those videos will be, but our Canva rep has told me that sometimes the quality will go down if it is a really long video. So you might just notice more graininess in the video if it gets longer. Canva works better if it does not have a strong discussion focus. So if you have a student just creating a video and turning it into you, that works well. Or if maybe even a group of students that are creating a video together, that can work well. So three students working on a project that they're turning into you, that can work well. But it doesn't work as well when you want the whole class to have a discussion. I'll talk through why that is um, when we get to our Canva design. But it mainly has to do with our limited visibility of who edited what on shared collaborative Canva designs. So as I said, uh, Padlet is our first option. This is a Padlet that I created for a presentation that I did. It is completely customizable, so you can change the background color, you can change the layout. You can see here that I have them in columns, but you do not have to use columns for your layout. So you have a lot of flexibility in how Padlet is created and how you want it organized. It does allow real-time collaboration, so students can all be posting at the same time, and you will see those posts appear in real time. There is an an unlimited number of posts per, per board. And then those posts could contain text, images, links, videos, of course, and files. There are privacy settings that you can go through, but there's also moderation. So if you're concerned about students posting something that is inappropriate, you would turn on moderation so that you can review and approve any post that is on the Padlet before it is viewable by everyone. And then lastly, you can share either uh, with a link that students will follow to be able to comment, or you can embed. Here is an example of Padlet. I'll just show you a couple of the tools that exist or the buttons that you'll use if you create a Padlet. The first one is your share. And this one gives those that you share this link with, uh, what are their permissions going to be? So I, you can see I can copy link to Clipboard and then I could paste that into my Canvas course to direct students here to complete an activity. I could also get a QR code uh, for this or an embed code to be able to, to embed it into my Canvas course. Now, I've used Padlet for a long time. I was looking through my Padlets, and I had some from seven years ago even. So I am a fan of Padlet, but I have to say they've made a lot of improvements since I first started using Padlet. One thing that I thought was really cool are these breakout links. Let's say I have a group project, and I want every group to come up with different parts of this Padlet. So maybe I have them in columns with different categories like I have, I have on this Padlet. They have breakout links. 
And you can see that I have different links for all of the different categories. So for my families group, I can copy that. And then if you want to see when you look at the families, it looks like they have their own board that they can post on. But when I go back to my board with everyone, you can see it shows up. So if you don't want students to be distracted by everything that's going on on the board, these breakout links are a really cool way that you can kind of focus different groups to one section or another. Let me show you quickly how students would post a video because I know that's what we're mainly doing on here. To add any post to a Padlet, they just click this plus bottom or plus button in the bottom right corner and then you'll see that they have all of these options. When I click the plus 12, it'll come up with all of the things that they can add. If they have already recorded a video elsewhere, maybe on their phone or on the built-in recorder on their computer, they could choose the upload. If they are recording live, they can go ahead and choose video recorder and then I can click the red button to be able to start my recording. One other thing on Padlet that is that might be helpful for teachers after you have finished the Padlet, you might find that you want to kind of go over the answers with your class. They have this play button, and what it does is it creates a slideshow with all of your answers. So you can see that it breaks them up and gives a little display of all of the responses. So if students are creating a video response and you want to share all of those video responses, you can click this share button and then it'll give you can share the link to the slideshow, which I think is just a little nicer way to share the finished product. One other piece you want to be aware of in Padlet is where to adjust all of those settings. I told you you can adjust the background, you can change the title, add a description with instructions. This might be where you want to include instructions on what to press to be able to record a video or your expectations for how long the video should be or what they should include in their video response. So all of those settings can be adjusted here. This is also where you can turn on moderation if you would like, tell it to filter profanity and create a custom URL. That is everything uh, with Padlet. It's very quick to set up and I think it'll be a good alternative for those of you that were using Flip, especially if you only completed short videos within Flip. With our next tool, it's our Canvas Assignments or Discussions. I will show you where that media recorder is that's built in, but with Canvas, you can also upload. So if students have created a video on Canva, maybe they use their built-in Chromebook screen recorder, or they've used a personal device to record their video, they can upload that to Canvas. They could also link or embed videos instead of uploading. And then I linked a tutorial here because anytime you are having students record audio or video, we want to make sure that they have a tutorial or instructions that are super clear for them so that if they need support, they're able to access that. So I've linked that. You could put that directly into your Canvas assignment. I've created a couple of different discussions to show you examples. This one is a discussion. So you can see I put the prompt here and then I have some guidelines, how long I would like the video. And then I remind them to be kind and considerate in their responses and to review the rubric for the requirements and then the expectations to post to at least two classmates post in either a video or a written description. You'll see I've linked that Canvas student guide that I was just talking about on how to use the media recorder. If we click to reply, we'll be able to see the same 
rich content editor that students will use. And this will take a little bit of training. If I were doing it with my class for the first time, I would probably demonstrate this for the class so that they know where to find the tools. For that media recorder, they're going to choose the one that has a little play button and the music icon, and then they'll choose upload slash record media. When you choose that, you are going to choose the record tab and they will show up. Here, you'll notice that you can either have a your camera or no video. With Canvas, there's not the option to do the screencast like you can do in both Padlet and in um, Canva. So that would be one limitation of recording within Canvas. But whenever I'm ready, I can click start recording. It does let me review that recording before I post it. I'm not sure if it's going to get confused uh, recording me twice, but we'll go ahead and try it. But I'll click finish. And then I can do save media. It says an error occurred. I imagine it's because my camera is being used by both Screencastify and Canvas right now. But normally what would happen is my video would appear right here and then I could click reply. With Canvas, that discussion works really well when you want students to respond to each other and have a discussion, a video discussion. But there might be instances that you want students just to complete a video submission and turn it in just to you. Maybe they are recording a presentation that they are doing and they're talking through uh, what they created and the presentation. So this one's an assignment instead of a discussion. And when I created this assignment, I selected that they could do a media recording. So the submission type is online, and then I selected media recording, and I'll show you what that looks like for the student. So we'll go into student view, and then you'll see I have similar guidelines here, as well as how to record, but they have the option to either record media or upload media. So this is very similar. We can choose record and then start recording and then save, similar to the screen that I just showed you on the previous um, discussion board. So once I have that filled in, I can save and submit the assignment. If students have already recorded, they can choose a file here and then submit right here. So you can see Canvas is very user friendly. Uh, I think it'll work very quickly for students and it's nice that everything is built into one tool to be able to record longer videos if you'd like. I also like the ease of grading whenever you are in Canvas. Remember that if you are wanting something more than 15 minutes long for the videos, you may want to consider recording elsewhere, such as the built-in screen recorder on the Chromebooks or uh, recording in Canva and then turning it in in Canvas. There is a built-in screencasting app on the student's Chromebook. I tested it out and it works really well. They just click the menu button and then choose screencast. It can record you and your screen and it will save automatically to Google Drive. It has a marker tool that they can mark on their screen as they're talking. It will generate a transcript and that transcript can be translated. And then my favorite part is really that edit, they can edit their transcript really easily. They can even mute uh, things from the transcript. So if they mess up, it has quite a few editing capabilities in comparison to what is available on Padlet and Canvas. If you want something a little bit more simple, so you do not want to record the screen, if you only want the webcam and front camera, you can use the camera app that is on the um, Chromebooks, built into the Chromebooks. This is what the interface looks like on the Screencast app. So they just hit new screencast and then they'll be able to record. 
With Canva, they also have a built-in screen recorder. Uh, one advantage of Canva is that you can have those longer videos, but they also already have accounts that have premium access. With these, you can work collaboratively. So if you want to have two students recording on the same document, you can with Canva. I might be hesitant about having your entire class record on one document on Canva because of the limited ability to view who adds what on a Canva document or Canva design. With Padlet, I'd feel comfortable sharing it with my entire class because I can turn on moderation, but with Canva, there's no moderation. So if I were to share it with the whole class, the version history is somewhat limited so that you can't always see who changed what in the version history. So just to give you an idea, if we look at the version history of my past document, you can see that it was auto-saved and you can say that I auto-saved it right here for current version, but all of these others show this blank person. So if a student were to add something inappropriate to a document that's shared to the whole class, at this point in Canva, you're not able to see exactly who added what uh, to that document. So for that reason, I would lean towards either Canvas or Padlet for discussions that are taking place with the whole class. However, if you have a student that is working in a small group, or if you have a student that is recording content just to share to you, Canva is a great alternative in that instance. It is very fast for them to upload. They can record on any design. So when they have anything up, it could be a presentation, it could be a flyer, a graphic that they've designed, can be anything. They're going to click uploads and then they'll choose record yourself. It brings up this video editor. You can see me in the little circle and then you'll hit record. I'll try it here, although like I said, it may struggle a little bit just because we're recording in two places. When I click done, I can go ahead and hit save and exit, and you'll see that my little bubble is going to appear right here on my slide. It, it might take a few seconds for that to appear based on how long that video is, but you do have the editing abilities here too. So if I want, I can click edit, and then you can see I can uh, apply different things to my frame. I can adjust the volume, change crop, uh, trim it if I need to, change the speed. So I'm able to edit that video, especially trim in it, the little bubble. I can also change the size or move it to different places on the slide to fit what I have room for. So here, I might not want it to be covering that area, so maybe I'd move it over here instead. One thing that's cool about this is I can then have another student record slide eight. So another student that's doing a group presentation could go to uploads, click record yourself, and different students can each be responsible for different slides. So then you have your media explaining each slide. Uh, as you go through the presentation. So that's a really cool option. When students are finished with their recording, the easiest way for them to share is probably to use that collaboration link. They can change this to Canyon School District Can View. They'll copy the link and then they could submit that to a Canvas discussion or to a Canvas assignment. Uh, so that it's easy for you to grade within SpeedGrader. All right, let's head back into our presentation so I can see if I've missed anything in our conversation today. Oh, I remember one more thing that I wanted to see here is that it has 
a tutorial that it's made specifically for students. So if you are doing this assignment, you can link this video tutorial for students so they can see how to do this recording without you typing out all of the instructions. So again, all of them kind of have their pros and cons. You'll want to consider what you want uh, for an assignment and what will work best for your lesson and your learning objectives. Please reach out to me. My email is katie.gephard at kenyansdistrict.org. If you run into any problems with these or have additional questions, I'm happy to help. Have a great day. Bye.